Next okay. on money, Egypt on the verge of collapse, and the clock is actually ticking. President Morsi now has less than 48 hours to solve the crisis before the military steps in. We've got the latest. All right, some very unsettling pictures out of Egypt. Chaos erupting on the streets in Tahrir Square for a second straight day. Protesters calling to oust President Mohamed Morsi. And earlier, the Egyptian army gave Morsi 48 hours to respond to the people's demands before they step in. It seems like the stage is being set for a possible military coup, though. The military is denying that as of right now. Dr. Zudi Jasser is president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. What do you think of this 48-hour warning? How does that play out? What does that mean? I mean, the clock started ticking about lunchtime today. What does it mean? Well, I think from the beginning, Melissa, many of us talked about the fact that Revolution 2.0 was around the corner. Even back from uh, when uh, Morsi took over a year ago and was inaugurated, we had, you know, I had said, and many of the liberal Muslim movements had said, you know, give us two to three years to get organized. And sure enough, what fueled the organization of the non-Islamists, the, the non-freedom and justice, those that really believe in freedom, was the fact that the Brotherhood in Power proved that they were neither for freedom and neither for justice. They were just autocrats all about theocracy. So now the military step in and saying, you know what? We may need to do the same thing we did after Mubarak, which is to put in place a council to bring forth a real constitution, not a theocratic one, to bring forth real economic prosperity. They've been economically failing the same if not worse economic complaints that they had at the time of the first revolution are being seen now. Egypt's primary sector of success, Melissa, is tourism. And that's been failing. And just yeah. a few weeks ago, he put in a governor into the biggest tourist area of Luxor, which was ahead of the Jamaat Islamiya terrorist group that they then went to the streets and within three days he had to resign because the people were saying, what are you doing putting terrorists in charge of governorship? So I think we're seeing finally a unification of the opposition the non-Islamist groups in Egypt. But what does it mean if the military comes in and says, you know, you haven't responded to what the people want, so we're taking you out of power. Do we know that they're going to do what you said? Do we trust them? And, and can they just overturn any election that they want to? Well, that's a great question. And the problem is, is that they don't really have a parliament in place yet. It's been taking too long. They weren't happy with the Constitution. A lot of the minorities just signed off as a result of how the Constitution was just sort of fiated into place. So there's a lot of maturing that has to happen. No, we can't go back to the Mubarak era. I hear a lot of people saying, well, let's get that type of secular dictatorship in. That would be wrong. That would not bring in economic prosperity. But what they need to do is sort of to be the adults and allow them to really have not only democracy, but freedom and liberty to allow their economics, free markets and other aspects to really come into play so that it's not politically oppression through basically saying that elections yeah. give thugs like Morsi the right to do whatever they want. So what should the U.S.'s role be in all of this? Because it seems like we have lost, you know, whatever leverage and prestige we had at some point, we do not have currently. And it actually seems like Russia is the one that's causing, calling a lot of the shots in the Middle East. What could we do in this particular situation? Well, how about if we wake up from our slumber? You know, the bottom line is, is not only are we not only are we in the back seat, we're way at the back of the bus. You saw the president just last week in South Africa say he wants democracy. Well, this is beyond democracy. This is about freedom and liberty. The people are have they've had signs in the street that say Obama administration supports terrorism. This is what they see America in defending the brotherhood. While the people are telling Hamas to stay out of Cairo, to stay out of Egypt, we are silent and our Pentagon today said, well, we're going to look at what the Egyptian army is talking about. Why not take this opportunity, which history is going to show either the Obama administration took advantage of or they allowed slip by to let Russia and other autocrats control. We take the opportunity to say we stand for freedom and liberty with the people of Egypt to stand against theocracy, against arrest for blasphemy, against uh, controlled economies and putting terrorists into governorships, etc. And actually what the people are talking about. There were people on the street praying because this is not about Islam. This is about political Islam, just like Turkey was. And we slept through a month ago what happened in Turkey and we better not sleep through what's happening this week in Cairo. Wise words, Zudi. Thank you so much for coming on.